Hey, I'm Farm Dad, and today I'm going to give a fairly basic overview of a Massey Ferguson 35 tractor. I have a lot of videos on these Massey Ferguson 35 tractors here on YouTube, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you own one of these, it'll probably come in handy to you at some point. Now I am not one of those historical experts that's going to be able to tell you exactly how these machines were set up from the factory and I'm not going to be able to help you with your tractor restoration. Instead, what this video is, is more of a uh, operator's manual for the guy who just got one of these and uh, is just kind of wanting to know the ins and outs of uh, how to operate it. I'm just going to start up here in the operator station and kind of go over uh, the starting procedure. Now on these old tractors uh, it's pretty simple. You need to have the clutch pedal which is right over here at my left foot pressed down. You need to put your transmission into neutral. So I've got neutral right there and neutral over here. Then the kill uh, rod needs to be pushed in. The starting switch on these, if you cut it to the right, it's gonna, that's a warm start. So this would be like warm start right here. If you switch to the left, so that was a right turn to start. If you go to the left, to the first position, that turns on your heater. And this tractor that I have does not have a functioning heater. Um, and so I've actually never used it, but uh, you leave it on heat for roughly 10 to 20 seconds. You should hear a little poof from your manifold. And then from there, you can go one more position down, which is heat start. That's what HS stands for on there, heat start. So if I, on a cold day, I would, I've got it to the first position for heat. I'd wait my 10 seconds and then I would go all the way over. And apparently I have a bad ground at the moment because, or a dead battery. Um, it's not wanting to turn over for some reason. Alright, my machine is idling. The throttle it up. That's this rod right here. And back down. You'll see on the uh, tachometer right there uh, a notch for PTO speed. So when you're running your implements, that is the RPM level that you would want to be at for like your bush hog and things like that. I'm not throttling mine up yet because you don't want to rev these up when they're cold. Uh, you want to let it have time to warm up. To turn your tractor off, all you have to do is pull that out. One little funky doohickey that a lot of people don't realize what it is. Uh, you'll see this on your dash. That's actually a dashboard light. Uh, this pulls off and there is a light bulb inside there. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to let you know that I have partnered with Super Clean. And if you hit that subscribe button right now, you're going to be entered for a chance to win a gift basket of cleaning products from them. So what do you have to lose? Click that subscribe button and help me out. Thanks. I mentioned putting the two gear shifts in neutral to start the tractor earlier. And then when I was editing this video, I realized I never actually talked about uh, how to use these gear shifts. So this left gear shift uh, will take you through three speeds and the right gear shift has a high and a low range. So effectively giving you a six speed transmission. Now, uh, when you're working, you're going to be in low range, which is forward. When you are uh, heading down the road, you'll probably be in high range. Uh, I tend to spend most of my time in second gear, low range. Uh, sometimes if I'm plowing, uh, uh, then I might be in first gear, low range. Going over 
some more of the controls here. To the right of the driver's seat is your hydraulics control. And so down and up. Next to your position control for your hydraulics is the draft control. Now the draft control is used with plowing implements. Uh, so anything that's going to go uh, into the earth. And this isn't something that I've used a whole lot so I'm no expert on it. But my basic understanding is if you're bush hogging uh, or running a finish mower and you don't want uh, to use your draft control, if you want it kind of turned off, then you should keep it in this top position all the time. And that is sort of the uh, off position. Now when you want it on, uh, that's going to be like when you're plowing and the purpose of this is to, to keep an, as even of a plow level as possible over uneven ground. And uh, so what you'll do, my understanding is, is while you're plowing, uh, you'll start off here and then you can kind of move it uh, down into maybe the midway point and uh, adjust as necessary until you feel like uh, that plow is uh, staying at the right level. And so um, let me try to explain it a little better than that. Uh, you would set your plow to your position using your uh, position control and kind of at the level you want. Then you would move this. Uh, normally it's, I think, it's recommended to go, you know, part way down and you just kind of feel uh, its response to that uh, as you're going over uneven ground and then adjust it as necessary lower if it's uh, needed. And again, I'm not an expert, it's probably not the best explanation of it, but uh, that's what was told to me. What that draft control is actually doing is uh, changing the spring pressure and they're on your top link up here and that's why you see sort of this funny uh, setup uh, to your top link and that is your draft control there and it'll sort of move it in and out uh, based on uh, pressure on that rear spring and that'll cause your plow uh, like if it hits a, a hard rock or something like that it, it'll kind of alleviate it and allow it to bounce up and over um, and at the same time, if it has no pressure because it's kind of popped out of the ground as you're uh, heading over a uh, slope, uh, then it should kind of push it down and get that plow lowered into the ground. On the right side floorboard the, uh, is your brake pedal. And right now I have mine locked together. This actually has the emergency brake on. Um, so let's show how to operate that. To turn off the emergency brake, you just press down on the pedal. That releases it. Uh, right now, I have both uh, rear tires braking at the exact same time. If I didn't want, if I wanted individual wheel braking, you pull this lever right here over, and now I can brake with just my left pedal. Or let me move that out of the way or just my right pedal I rarely ever have a need for that function so I leave them locked all the time to set the emergency brake you press down on the brake to the point of where you want to leave it and then you lift up with that and now it is set on the left side this pedal is your clutch this has a two-stage clutch, meaning when you press it down to the where it first feels like it bottoms out, that's going to work your transmission gears, the clutch inside your transmission. If you go farther than that, which is just a little bit farther, and it takes a real heavy foot to so get that second stage of the clutch, uh, that cuts power to your PTO. I should also mention that you may have a pedal uh, somewhere right down here on your tractor that this tractor does not have. Uh, what that pedal is, is a differential lock. So you press down on that pedal and it'll lock both of your rear tires together to give you a whole lot more traction. And that's the one feature this tractor doesn't have that I really, really wish I had. 
this is my John Deere backhoe and this is that same pedal that I was just talking about this is the differential lock on it uh, what it looks like moving just a little bit behind the clutch pedal is the controls for the PTO uh, this lever here uh, has two options you can go up into engine PTO center is neutral or you can go down into ground PTO now the difference between the two is engine PTO is what you'll mostly be using that's going to be you know when you're running a bush hog um, or let's say a, a post hole digger you know an auger something like that that uh, is where the speed of your PTO is based on your RPM speed of your engine now if you go down into ground PTO which is used for things like um, cedars and stuff like that that changes your uh, PTO speed based on how fast your rear tires are moving so it's a ground speed moving around to the PTO most 35s have an adjustable lift arm here um, and then not I happen to have stabilizer arms on this unit uh, that's these right here but I've seen many many tractors without them but if you did want stabilizer arms, that is where they would hook up. While I'm back here speaking of the uh, PTO, I should go ahead and just mention that sort of a best practice. Uh, when you fire up uh, your tractor and you're getting ready to, to run your PTO implements, you want to idle down uh, before engaging your PTO. Uh, once you've idled down, engaged your PTO, then you can idle up from there to the engine PTO speed. And that just helps uh, prevent a lot of stress on all the different components of your tractor. If you've spent a lot of time out in the hay fields or out bush hogging, you may from time to time need to clean off the radiator. And to do that, there are two uh, bolts that you can hand loosen to, on both sides and that will allow you to take this grill cover off and uh, clean off that radiator. The battery gas tank and radiator reservoir are located underneath this hatch in your hood. So radiator, gas or gas or diesel tank and battery. Your sending unit for your fuel gauge is right here on the back of the fuel tank. And if you're wondering what this is, that's the reservoir for your heater plug that is activated when you are using the cold start heater. So it actually takes some diesel fuel out of your tank, uh, ignites that in your manifold, and that provides enough heat to then warm the engine for you to do a cold start. Besides the hatch here, if you were to need to change your battery or things like that, you can lift the whole hood up. Um, mine's hitting the front bumper, so if I ever need to lift it all the way up, I need to remove that front bumper. But that'll give you better access to all of this. These Massey Ferguson 35s came with three different engines. You had a petrol version, which was your gas burner. Uh, you had a Continental four-cylinder diesel. And then you have the Perkins three-cylinder diesel, which is what this tractor is here. Now all three of those are good engines and you'll still find plenty of models with each one of those around today. but. The Perkins diesel is the most desirable and it is the one that built the reputation of these tractors. So I thought I'd go ahead and just show you around a Perkins diesel since I have it here. Uh, this big weird looking gray thing, yours may be round, it often is, uh, is the oil bath air cleaner. And I have a video that actually shows how to, to clean one of these out and restore it. And hopefully I'll, I'll post a link uh, right up here but uh, that what it is is basically that's an air filter and it uses oil that sits down in this reserve uh, to clean the air it's sort of a different design than what we're used to nowadays I think I mentioned earlier that my heater plug is not functioning on this 
tractor, obviously that's probably because there's no wires hooked up to it. But if you're wondering where the heater plug uh, is, this is it right there. So it's sort of like a modern day glow plug, except uh, actually completely different. But what happens is diesel fuel comes right in through there and is ignited. And that heats up this manifold and makes it easier for this engine to start. Moving up further, this is a Delco Remy generator. Uh, some of these tractors have been uh, converted over to alternators. One thing you do always have to check, and I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but uh, some tractors are positive ground, some are negative ground, uh, some are 6 volt, some are 12 volt. So uh, make sure to figure out all that stuff before you start working on any type of uh, engine electrical on your tractor. Back behind that is the starter and the solenoid. To check the oil on a Perkins diesel, yeah, right next to the oil filter is your dipstick. I should mention that this is also an engine oil filter retrofit kit that's been installed on this tractor prior to me getting it. So you may have a little bit of a different setup than what I have. If you need to fill oil uh, right up here behind this is where you would fill your oil. Speaking of fluids, um, over on the other side of the tractor now, this is where your, right behind here, this is your dipstick for your hydraulic fluid. And then it's going to work both your hydraulic system and your transmission. If you need to fill your tractor with hydraulic fluid, uh, you'll notice right here next to your shifters, uh, you can take this out and you can fill right there. These are the two fuel filters for the tractor. To turn the fuel lines off, right above that filter, you'll see a little petcock right here. And you can turn this in to turn off the fuel. And moving back over to the other side of the tractor, I should also mention that there's a fuel sediment bowl right here. Mine's quite dirty and needs cleaned out. But that is the fuel sediment bowl and the bleeder assembly. Going underneath this leaky tractor, I wanted to show one other item. You'll notice uh, right here in the bottom of the transmission bell housing this uh, little cotter pin that seems like what is something broken why is that sitting in there like that this is supposed to be in there like that from the factory this what it's in is a weep hole uh, which allows if you happen to have anything uh, that's dripping inside there uh, like a like a rear main seal or things like that that hole keeps that cavity from filling up with fluid and if it was to fill up with fluid it's gonna burn up your clutch and ruin your clutch and so what they did uh, knowing that it's this hole could easily fill when you're driving you know if you're doing hay or or bush hogging and things like that get grass and dirt and things stuck in there and could clog that up and then you could ruin your clutch if you had a leak so the cotter pin what happens is when you're mowing through tall grass, the tall grass hits it and it keeps turning it and basically keeps that hole from getting plugged up. So if you don't have a cotter pin there, you want one and uh, you don't want to try to get rid of it. It's supposed to be there. And moving forward, uh, that little gold uh, plug right there, that is the drain plug for your oil. Also, while I'm under here, I wanted to go ahead and move back toward the back of the tractor over here, and you can see a drain plug right there uh, for your hydraulic system. And the transmission drain plug is between the two of those right here. Now, I'm sure I missed some stuff, and I may have even got a few things wrong, so let me know in the comments if I did. I hope this video helped you. If it did, would you mind helping me by clicking the subscribe button? We are a family of six living our best life on 90 acres in the Washtenaw Mountains of Arkansas. 
And every time someone hits that subscribe button, it helps grow our channel. We appreciate you.